Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Thumma amma ba'd fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Wa al-nazi'ati gharqan Wa al-nashitati nashtan Wa al-sabihati sabhan Fa al-sabiqati sabqan Fa al-mudabbirati amra Rabbi shahli sadri wa yassir li amri Wa ahlul uqtatan min lisani Yafqahu qawli amin ya rabbal alameen I'm not sure if I shared Surat al-Nazi'at some things with you or no I don't think I did no, I gave a secret khutbah about it two weeks ago. <laughs> secret khutbah, because, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know. But anyway, so I wanted to share with you actually some things about uh, nazm in the Quran. Uh, nazm is the subject of how uh, the, the subject matter of the Quran is organized and how it seems at first glance that uh, the, the, the discussion is completely disconnected like all these parts, they have nothing to do with each other. But at a more careful look, you realize that everything's actually going together for one cohesive argument. So Surah Al-Nazi'at is like that. It begins with a series of oaths. Allah swears by the things that pull and dive in. Nazi'at, the things that pull, gharqan, as they dive in. Wa nashitati nashtan, and they are extremely bu busy in activity. Wa sabihati sabhan, he swears by things that swim and sail smoothly. Fa sabiqati sabqan, then they beat each other in the race. They're getting ahead of one another, you know. Fa mudabbirati amran, they're executing the command. The, whatever command they've been given, they're planning and executing it. Uh, that's the oath. And we don't know what these things that pull are. Allah doesn't say what they are. He just says they pull and they dive in, right? So you have opinions of the Sahaba of what that might mean. So we'll come back to that. As soon as that's done, there are actually a number of ayat that are about the day of judgment, the day on which the major disturbance come, uh, shakes you. يَوْمَ تَرْجُفُ الرَّاجِفَةِ تَتْبَعُهَا الرَّاجِفَةِ You know, the, then another wave of disturbance comes after that. قُلُوبٌ يَوْمَ إِذِينَ وَاجِفَةِ The hearts are, you know, they're trembling and they're terrified. أَبْصَارُهَا uh, خَاشِعَةِ Their eyes, the eyes of those hearts are full of awe. Then you get to the next scene where they're questioning, are we really going to get taken, taken back to the ditch? In other words, we're going to be taken out of our graves again. Uh, or, or no, when we're, our bones are reduced, how can this return ever happen? It's just going to be Allah then responds, it's going to be one loud explosion, one scolding, and all of a sudden you'll be there in the middle of the dark. Sahira means to spend all night standing somewhere, or stand somewhere not being able to sleep in the middle of the entire night. Now th again, the first subject was some oaths where things are pulling and doing all kinds of activity. Then there was Day of Judgment. Then there's people who question the Day of Judgment. Then all of a sudden there's Halataka Hadithu Musa. Did the news of Musa come to you? So and and then more and more and more. Like there's other subjects that keep coming, right? So it seems over the course of a page and a half, there's like six different things happening, and they seem completely disconnected. But actually, all of this is one very beautifully woven argument. It's actually tapestry in the Quran. The first ayat are actually two scenes at the same time. You'll find in Arabic when you have a nazi'at, al-adiyat, you know, al-asifat, etc. This is actually a reference to a different, it's, it compares winds, it compares horses. And most of the time these are scenes of people that are going to attack a village. You know the Arabs had camps and villages. And you have these raiders that go in the middle of the night. And right before the morning they come and attack this place when everything is calm. And when the riders are coming, they pull on the horse. Those that pull. And when they pull, as they pull, they dive deep into the camp. You know, And they're, ex they're busy, busy, busy because they have to loot this tent, that tent, this one, that one. And they make their attack super quick and they're smooth in, it, smooth in and smooth out. And sabha. And as they make their escape, they're not going slow. They're actually racing each other to get away because they have to get away from the enemy they just attacked. فَسَابِقَاتِ sabqa. And then when they're done, they finally execute the command. In other words, they've collected all the spoils and now they're distributing among each other. That's one way of looking at this entire first scene. Yet another way is like the Salaf would describe it is like the angels that pluck the ruh from the body. You may have heard that before. The angels dive in and they pluck the ruh from the body, right? They pull the soul out of the body. But actually, it's both of those scenes at the same time. Let me show you how. Allah Azza wa is going to describe the Akhirah and how it's going to come all of a sudden. 
you will have no warning. And the Arab says, what? What do you mean no warning? And Allah says, let me give you a scene that you can imagine. And the scene is when they get attacked in the middle of the night. Just like the angels will come and start pulling away and they'll know exactly what to do. And they'll swim through and sail through the skies just like the raiders come and they sail away. And they're going to execute the command just like, you know, these raiders come and execute. And it, it happens out of nowhere. You don't expect the raiders to come. It's a peaceful, quiet night. And so immediately he switches over just like that. All of a sudden the disturbance will come. يَوْمَ تَرْجُفُ الرَّاجِفَةِ the, disturb, the day on which the disturbance comes. And then another wave comes after that. Just like the attackers, they come in waves. You think the first wave is gone, the next wave shows up. تَتْبَعُهَا radifa. And when, imagine that scene where the village is being attacked, the raiders are, being atta are attacking in the middle of the night. What's happening to people who are like looking around? قُلُوبٌ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ wajifa, أَبْصَارُهَا خَاشِعَةً Their hearts are trembling. Their eyes are full of awe. And then the raid is all done. The raid is all done. When it's done, not anything of value has been taken away. And what's left on the ground is basically footprints of these horses. Right? You know what the Arabic word is for footprints of the horse? Hafira. Yaquluna a'inna lamarduduna fil hafira. On the one hand means, are we really going to be taken back to our graves or pulled out of our graves and things like that? But the other meaning is, once the, once the village is destroyed, all that's left is these footprints. Why would anybody want to go back? And if they did go back, they would see, see nothing of benefit. Tilka idan karratun khasira. It would be a, a, a return that is full of loss. In other words, them questioning Judgment Day, Allah is comparing them with, with the way they would think about how they would come back after a village has been destroyed. فَإِنَّمَا هِيَ زَجْرَةٌ wahida. Then it's going to be a loud cry. The loud cry could be the sur on Judgment Day. You know, nufiqa fisur. But in this dunya, the guy comes back to his village. Everything is burnt. There's shoe prints, the horseshoes are print everywhere. What does he do? He cries. And he falls on his knees. فَإِذَاهُمْ بِسَّاهِرًا And they're spending the entire night crying. Because there's nothing left. Allah compares the scene of dunya with the scene of what? Akhirah. So you're, you're seeing two scenes at the same time. Now, when you, see, when you realize this, all of this could have been avoided. If somebody just told the villagers that Raiders are coming. An attack is coming. They could have been prepared, isn't it? Halataka hadithu Musa. Didn't the news of Musa come to you? When Allah brought him to himself so he can send him to Fir'aun to warn him, Idhabila Fir'auna innahu tagha. Go warn Fir'aun, because Fir'aun should be warned that the attack is what? It's coming. Take warning. And when you give someone huge news like attack is coming, you should give them some proof. He showed him the biggest signs. He still turned away and lied. You know? So Allah is now describing that the purpose of messengers is not to destroy nations, but to save them. Destruction's already coming. Now the point I made in Surah An-Nur. Then he makes his own, he turns away and he starts making other efforts. In other words, you make efforts against the one who warned you instead of making efforts against the attack. And he got full of his pride and he started gathering. This is really amazing. This entire scene, this entire warning is a warning about Judgment Day, isn't it? And Judgment Day is when Allah will gather people. But Fir'aun decides he wants to have his own hashar. And Judgment Day, Allah will call. But he decides he's going to make his own call. And Judgment Day, Allah will describe he is, you know, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَّارِ Who owns kingdom today? It is Allah. And Fir'aun gathers people. And instead of calling on Allah, he says, أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى I am your supreme Rabb. SubhanAllah. The contrast between what's going to happen on Judgment Day with the actual Rabb and what this idiot is doing thinking he is Rabb. He's making his own hashar, his own nida. And his own declaration of Ana ala. And what is, you know, by the way, up until now, isn't it? Akhira and dunya, akhira and dunya. Right? Isn't that what's happening? So look at the language. So Allah made him an example of the akhira and the earliest ones. SubhanAllah. How things tie together in Quran. He made him into the exa an example for the after for the final and the earliest. Just like dunya and akhira are parallel, now dunya and akhira are mentioned literally. But from here on, which you read the center of the, the surah, which is him saying that I am your supreme, supreme master. 
what Allah does from here. He basically does, then decides to prove who is Rabbukum ala. So he says, أَأَنْتُمْ أَشَدُّ خَلْقَنَ sama. Are you a more powerful creation or the sky? Banaha. He built it. Building is important because Fir'aun did a lot of building. The most impressive architecture in the world in his time was his. The highest architecture was his. He says, Rafa'a samkaha, he elevated its roof, its ceiling. Because Fir'aun could never build something that could be as high a ceiling as Allah. So when he says Al-A'la, what does he know? What does he know of a sama? Rafa'a samkaha fasawaha. Then he says, وَأَغْطَشَ لَيْلَهَا وَأَخْرَجَ ضُحَاهَا He made the night of it dark and its morning bright. By the way, when the first scene happened, when did it happen? At night and by morning it was all too late. It was all too late. He's the one who brings the night, he pulls the morning out. Ties, it, everything ties back. Then, وَالْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ ضُحَاهَا He made the earth smooth and, smooth and spread out. When you say smooth and spread out, it kind of suggests that the earth is vast. But when a nation, when, a, when the village is attacked, then you describe the Quran will describe Daqat Alehimul Ardu Bima Rahubat, the earth that used to be vast became tight on them. They had nowhere to run. Allah is saying here that Allah intends the earth to be vast. But when people don't take his warning, what happens? It becomes tight. That's the purpose of the earth, to be vast, to be accessible. And then on top of and by the way, Firaun believes he has massive land. And he has huge rivers. وَهَذِهِ الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِي He says in Qur'an, These rivers flow under my feet, under from under me, مِنْ تَحْتِي And Allah says then, after he says, وَالْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ دَحَهَا أَخْرَجَ مِنْهَا مَاءَهَا وَمَرْعَاهَا He's the one who brought out its waters. You think you own the rivers? He's the one who brought out its waters and its pasture. The pasture is the greenery of the earth. By the way, so Allah is saying the earth is made comfortable and vast and smooth. And then he's saying the water is a means of comfort and, and life. He brings the water out so you can have greenery and life. But in the case of Fir'aun, the earth became tight and the water was not a source of life. The water became a source of death. In other words, the things that Allah created as ni'mah in this world, if you don't approach them properly, are the same things that will be your death. Those same things. The same ni'mah will be your poison. أَخْرَجَ مِنْهَا مَا أَهَا وَمَرْعَاهَا I love this ayah. وَالْجِبَالَ أَرْسَاهَا And the mountains, he planted them down. Irsa is actually used when you plant a peg for a tent. You know the big giant nail for a tent? That's irsa, when you nail it in. He says he planted the mountains down. Now some people get obsessed with the science of these ayat and how mountains were formed. Look, that's not the subject of the ayah. You know what the subject of the ayah is? If you look at the, the architecture of the pharaohs, they tried to mimic the mountains. They tried to make it look like mountains because mountains are a symbol of power. Okay? But when they built these mountains, their own artificial mountains, these pyramids, they had to go from the bottom up. So to get higher, you start at the bottom and you keep building up. Allah's architecture, mountains which are much taller than any of these pyramids, He doesn't have to build bottom up, He drops them down. <laughs> Who is Al A'la? <laughs> you see? Well, Jibala Arsaha. It's so incredible, like the, the language is so powerful. How Allah is responding to the arrogance of this person. Then He says, Mata'allakum waliyan'amikum. This is good for you, uh, you know, means of sustenance for you things for you to enjoy, and your cattle. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبْرَى Then finally, when the, final, when the greatest calamity strikes. By the way, الْكُبْرَى, second time. فَأَرَاهُ الْآيَةَ الْكُبْرَى فَإِذَا جَاءَتُ الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبْرَى Why? Because he was shown the greatest signs, so he could warn himself, take, take warning of the greatest calamity. So when you get to the ayah of the greatest calamity, it reminds you that you should have been ready for it because you were shown the greatest signs. فَأَرَاهُ الْآيَةَ الْكُبْرَى يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ مَا سَعَى The day on which the human being will remember full well all the efforts he used to make. By the way, سَعَى the second time. We've seen, you know, ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَى يَسْعَى Fir'aun makes efforts. He makes running around. So now Allah is reminding us the people who had a lot of power and ran around with freedom, then now they'll remember the wrong things they ran after. 
You know, and the parallel is made with Fir'aun. وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَنْ يَرَى It's so awesome. Jahim is brought forward for whoever wants to see. By the way, do we want to see Jahim? No. The thing to see is what Allah's messengers show you. فَأَرَاهُ الْآيَةَ الْكُبْرَى They came to show you so you could see. They could make you see the biggest signs. That's what you want to see. So you don't have to see Jahim. Because if you don't see these ayat, then you'll have to see Jahim. You're, you're going to see one way or the other. You know, وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَنْ يَرَى Then, you know, فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى the one, who, the one who preferred worldly life, then Jahim is his place to find refuge. It's amazing, the word refuge here. First of all, he says, the one who preferred this life. You know, preferred this life. By the way, we're supposed to prefer both lives. We're not supposed to prefer akhirah over dunya. We're supposed to actually get the best of dunya and the best of Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana. You're supposed to balance both. Just like the images, everything is dual, 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 dual. You know? And so now, by, by the time you get to this ayah, I'll tell you why ma'wa is so awesome. The jahim will be the place where he finds refuge. In the beginning, there was a raid. And when there's a raid, where do you want to go? Refuge. Refuge. These people will have no refuge. The refuge, will be, the refuge after judgment day for them is far worse than judgment day itself. It's a jahim. Then, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ The one who was afraid of standing in front of his Rabb. Now, you would imagine why Allah uses this kind of language here. You could just say, خَافَ Allah, The one who, who feared Allah. What is it? He says, the one who was afraid of standing in front of his Rabb. Is the word Rabb being used for the first time? No. Fir'aun said, أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَىٰ yeah? Now, if you think about Fir'aun, you realize something. Fir'aun says, لَعَلِّي أَطَّلِعُوا إِلَىٰ إِلَىٰهِ مُوسَىٰ why don't you build me a tower? I'll go up, climb into the sky. I want to go talk to the God of Musa. He wants to stand face to face with Allah. And Allah says by the end of this, the one who was afraid of standing in front of his Rabb. Man khafa maqam rabbihi. Wanaha nafsa anil hawa. He prevented himself from, t- from temptation. Fa inna al jannata hi al ma'wa. Then jannah is his. Final, final place to find refuge. By the way, interestingly enough, no other nation that I know of in Quran, Allah describes their nation as Jannat. Except Fir'aun. كَمْ تَرَكُوا بِنْ جَنَّاتٍ وَعِيُونَ مِنْ جَنَّاتٍ وَنَعِيمٍ Oh my God. وَنَعْمَةٍ كَانُوا فِيهَا فَاكِهِينَ The kind of description you get in the Quran of Jannah, the only other group that I know of in Quran that Allah will describe their assets, like He's describing Jannah itself, is the Egyptians, is the Pharaohs. When they were drowned in the water, Allah said about them how many gardens they left behind, how many blessings, how many luxuries that they used to enjoy and smile over. Those, those words that are used to describe what they left behind, other than Fir'aun's assets, other than the Egyptian assets, the only time you find those words is for Jannah. It's amazing. Here he says, فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَىٰ The true Jannah, not that worldly Jannah that Fir'aun had, the true Jannah is this, this person's refuge, the one who's able to prevent himself from desire. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ السَّاعَةَ They ask you about the hour. Which hour? Judgment day. But how do they ask you about it? أَيَّانَ مُرْسَاهَا When is it going to be planted down? Wait, planting down, is that the first time? What was that? What else was planted down? Okay. Look, f- do people ask Fir'aun questions? When Fir'aun says, I will punish you, does anybody go, when are you going to punish us? You would have to be really stupid to go to Fir'aun, the owner of that palace, and go ask him what? When are you going to punish? Because if you say, when are you going to punish, he'll say, I'll show you. I was going to do it later, but for you, I'll give you special right now. You know? Isn't that the case? So you're afraid of the guy who owns this mini little pyramid. But you're not afraid of the one who dropped the mountains. 
And you ask, when is it coming? When is it being dropped? Just the word mursa should remind you that the one who dropped the mountains is powerful enough that you shouldn't be asking stupid questions. When is Judgment Day coming? Ayana mursa. And then you understand the next ayah, Fima anta min dhikraha. In what capacity are you going to be making any mention of it? Who are you to say anything about it? Ila rabbika muntahaha. To your master is the final place of it, the final dropping of it. Meaning, when it will it happen? When will it take place? And when will it end? That is up to Allah. Fir'aun in this in this context had that fahashara. He gathered people. He tried to do his own day of gathering. <laughs> And Allah says, I'll, I own mine. Nobody else gets to tell me when. إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ مُنْتَهَاهَا إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرُ مَنْ يَخْشَاهَا You are just there to warn anybody who is going to be somewhat afraid of it. Now my favorite, the, the last ayah, كَأَنَّهُمْ يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَهَا Those people, as though when they, when they see it on that day, لَمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا عَشِيَّةً أَوْ ضُحَاهَا they, didn't, they will think they didn't remain except a night and its own morning. That night and that morning. Where did this entire surah begin? With a raid. When does the raid happen? Between the night and the morning. And you know, if you were experiencing that raid and you were terrified and you were like, my life is over, even if you survived it, all you would ever remember about your life is that night. And judgment day will come and that raid of the angels will come. <laughs> And people will be pulled out of their, you know, like people are sleeping in a tent and they always say, oh, what's happening? What's happening? People are going to be sleeping in their graves and what's happening? What's happening? Looters come into the tent and pull you out and angels are going to come into the grave and yank people out. You know, this is, this is what's going to be happening. And when that happens, they're not going to remember anything else about their life but what? That night. That, that's all they'll remember. How all, both of those images are just kind of fused back together by the time you get to the end of the surah. It's amazing. It's just absolutely mind-blowing how Allah Azza wa Jal speaks. The problem is you can't capture the majority of what I just said if you just read what? If you just read translation. You just can't. And I told you there's a tipping point in the surah when he says, Ana rabbukum. Al-A'la. You know, uh, Professor Neil Robinson, when he was doing his study of the analysis of the surah, who's now, Professor Neil is now Muslim, mashallah, great scholar of the Quran, really just incredible scholar. He was an Orientalist who became Muslim. Um, and he, you know, he, what he discovered when he talked about Rabbukum al ana Rabbukum al ala being the central ayah of the surah, where everything shifts about Allah to the second half, same number of syllables. From beginning of the surah to Ana Rabbukum al A'la, and the same number of syllables from there to the end. Not words, syllables. Syllables. Perfectly centered. Ana Rabbukum al A'la. SubhanAllah. That's the, that's the message that is actually being taught. Don't be like Fir'aun. You're the, the arrogance of Quraysh is like the arrogance of Fir'aun. Don't just think you have to have those castles and that power to be that arrogant. You could have nothing and be like Fir'aun. You can be like that, subhanAllah. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us a correct understanding and a better and better appreciation of His perfect word. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you benefited. I'd like to encourage you to actually embark on a comprehensive journey into the Quran. I've done a video translation and explanation of the entire Quran. It's called Quran Cover to Cover. I'd like you to check it on at Bayina TV. Just do a little bit of it every day. And before you know it, you'll have gone through the entire Quran in translation with me. Hope you can take part. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.